Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Keep Swing. I'm your host, Matt Stucco. I am super pumped about today's guest, and the reason why is because her skill set is just so broad. She's got such a great range. She really does it all. She's an actress, a producer, a screenwriter, now an author of a top-selling book right now on Amazon, Angie Bolero. Angie, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. I'm super pumped too. <laughs> no, I'm just so excited because we have a lot in common and especially when it does come to that skill set. You really do it all. I mean, when I listed everything and I'm sure I missed a thing or two, I know you're a voiceover actor as well, but you do it all. It's it's ex- extremely impressive. Oh, thank you. Um, it's also extremely exhausting, um, but it's a lot of fun. I feel like, you know, I wouldn't do it any other way. You know how it is. You got to it's all hustle. You got to you got to do what you can do any way you can do it. <laughs> That's right. So when it does come to everything that you have learned, what kind of attributes to that? And, and what was the reason why you want to have your hands in everything? I know from personal experience, it it's great from a workflow standpoint because you understand what an editor goes through. You understand what a producer goes through. Yeah. You under- understand what the cameraman's going through. And, and also, too, it creates so many opportunities, which that's exactly what it's done for you. So, I mean, just what do you attribute that to? I think being a youngest child in a very big Italian family, <laughs> I just always wanted to do everything. I wanted to be a part of everything. The youngest one isn't always a part of everything. And I kind of always felt like I was being a little left out. And so I never wanted to be left out. So I always wanted to do everything. Um, My family jokes that like, I wanted to do a hundred things growing up. Like I I always wanted to be an actor, but then I also wanted to swim with the dolphins and I wanted to be a firefighter and I wanted to play for the WNBA, true story. And I also, you know, wanted to be on the SWAT team. And I think I just realized that it's one of the reasons why I love acting and writing is you can do all of those things as an actor and as a writer. And, you know, I'm just never going to be in the WNBA. Like, it's just not going to happen. I thought maybe for a while there, but probably not going to happen. But telling stories, you can make all of this happen, right? And I think for me, that was always just what drove me. I just always wanted to be a part of everything. And then when I was in college, I studied, I got a degree in film production because I knew that I wanted to be on both sides of the camera. And like you said, I I wanted to understand. I didn't want to just go in front of the camera and not get how things work, like how cameras work, how lenses, lighting, um, what everybody's role is and how interconnected they all are, right? Because you can have the best actor in the world, but if you don't have a great script or, you know, you don't have a crew, you don't have anything and vice versa. So everything really um, is so interconnected with each other. And I love that and um, wanted to, to know that I understood all the different parts of it. Now, I mean, I'm still learning. There's still, there's so much to learn. Um, you know, so every day, every day learning something new. And one of the greatest parts about that is that you never pigeonhole yourself. So if there is an opportunity out there, you could say, hey, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. So you don't let a label limit you, which I think is is also very important when it does come to trying to maximize and capitalize on any sort of opportunity that comes across your plate. So whether it's a commercial for Bank of America, again, like a voiceover, um, the film The Networker, which has pretty good reviews on IMDb. So, <laughs> but when it, when it comes to any of that stuff, I mean, it's like a world of opportunity for you. And I think that's very important because so many kids yeah. these days, they're going to school. I mean, even adults too, but they just think that they are an actor or an actress or somebody who wants to be on TV. Well, at the end of the day, you need to know how to do all this stuff. So then that way you can make that dream job of yours come true. And you've been living a dream, essentially doing what you love. You know, um, you, you touched on a, a couple of things here. Um, one, the word labels, um, it's like my most hated word in, in all of, um, of all of our language. I think for me, because, uh, people always try to label me and put me in a box and I just never fit in the box. Um, I'm very, very type A. And at the same time, I'm, you know, you know, when you take those tests and you're a color, and there's like blue, yellow, orange, green, red, and maybe you're blue and yellow, and maybe you're yellow and green, but there's no way you can be blue and red because they're on opposite sides of the spectrum. I'm always on opposite sides of the spectrum. And so people really always, they wanted to just, oh, well, she's very type A, or or, she's just a creative, or, you know, whatever the different uh, labels that we give people. And I, I never fit in that, and I never wanted to fit in that. And I think we 
need to be um, more open and aware that labels are a negative thing. You know, positive does not come out of them because things are beyond labeling, right? And we want to live a life and be people that are beyond this label that goes on to everybody. So that was always really big for me because I felt like people often tried to pigeonhole me and I didn't want to be stuck in that. Um, and then as far as just doing everything, I mean, I really, it now it's all paying off, but it wasn't necessarily a conscious choice. I had no option. I mean, I come from a family with no money in Detroit. You are not, you don't go to Hollywood. You're not an actor. You're not an author. You know, that's just, it's not realistic. Right. And so when I left and chased this crazy dream that everybody thought was ridiculous, I had no option but to make it because I had no money to fall back on. I had no connections, nothing, you know, nothing like that to help me along the way. So I had to just keep trying like, okay, this is going, but it's not going fast enough. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. What else can I do to help bring in income, to help me make it, to help get to that next step? Because I didn't have a fail safe. There was no, you know, net for me. I wasn't going back to Detroit. I love Detroit. I love Michigan. I'm a avid sports, uh, Detroit sports fan. But for me, there was, there was no, there was no career in Michigan for me. So everything I was doing was I cannot go back. Like I'm on this journey, I'm doing it and I can't fail. And so I just had to keep finding other things to do. And I think you're right. Um, actually have this really, kind of funny story. Um, we were looking for an intern. Uh, my husband and I, Mike Musco, we had just created our production company. We were looking for an intern and interviewed a lot of people. And first off, a lot of people have why they are not teaching job skills and interviewing skills at college is like beyond me. <laughs> but so we finally found this one kid fresh out of college. He wants to be a director. He was great. We loved him, you know, had a couple meetings and then we gave him the position. And then like a week later he emails and was like, listen, you know, I want to be a director and I just don't think there's time and I, or I have the energy to have another job as I'm chasing, you know, chasing my dream to be a director. And I looked at Mike and I was like, this kid's 21 years old. At this point I was not 21 years old. We'll just leave it at that. And I had six jobs and I'm like, you know, and at a point where we're like, I'm doing work. I'm, 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 you know, in films, I'm in commercials, I'm writing things. And I still had six jobs. And this little kid out of college was like, you yeah, know, no, I can't, I can't have two jobs. And, um, I think people don't want to often put that work in. Right. And like, it's hard. It's, it's hard to sacrifice and it's hard to work that hard for a very long time towards something that may or may not ever come true. <laughs> no, I mean, you bring up a great point and that's what this podcast is all about is just like, keep swinging, just keep on going, keep, keep swinging, stepping up to the plate. You know, like you may not hit a home run the first time, but the 10th, 12th, 100th, 200th time, whatever the heck it may be, like you can get your shot. You will get your shot as long as you put in the reps and um, it's funny too that you had brought up an intern because I want to say that you strike me as somebody, I've never seen you on set, but you strike me as somebody who, if you are an intern or you are the director, you're giving them the same type of respect, the same type of time and conversation energy as you would, like, it doesn't matter what the label is. And I think that's very important too. And that leads to successful shoots because this is something that I do all the time especially with professional athletes, if there's an intern nearby or a quote unquote cameraman, like he's not a quote unquote cameraman. He's, he's Mike. Like, yeah. you know, he's not yeah. an intern. He, he, her, her name's Jill, you know? And I think that's important to just kind of make it like a party rather than making it quote unquote work. Cause like you said, there's so much work that goes into this yeah. and you have to make it fun and you've been able to make it fun. And, and I'm just extremely impressed. Like I said before, and the other thing that I want to uh, bring up to you too right now, when it does come to creating opportunities, that you've created an amazing opportunity yourself with all those skills that you have, with telling an amazing story. I hinted at it towards the top selling new release on Amazon right now in children's book, Breaking the Ice, yeah. and a movie that you have coming out too that yeah. you're starring in between the pipes. But can you just share what you're doing right now, how amazing it is? Guys, you got to listen to this because it's awesome. 
and you're going to be hearing about it for a long time. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, I want you to go everywhere with me and just introduce me to everybody. I <laughs> that would be the hype man. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, yeah, so there it is, right there in the back. That's a, a first copy yep. of it, and there's the film on on this side, um, which is actually a pretty accurate like feeling of where I'm in just this like Manon bubble with like Manon story all around me. Um, well, you know, actually the movie started first uh, about five years ago after we did The Networker. Mike and I were like, let's just do it. Let's just jump in. Let's let's do our own film that you're going to write and you're going to star in. Because that was the whole point of us starting our production company. I had been acting in New York for a really long time and was getting to the point where I'm like, um, I'm tired of being somebody's girlfriend or somebody's wife. Not like the lead, right? You're the lead's girlfriend. You're the lead's wife. I'm also tired of all these auditions that require um, these roles that require nudity. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I want to do the meaty roles. I want to be the person who has, you know, the significant other that somebody else is playing. And so had been in the business a long time. and was like, I feel like we're at a point now where I know enough people that we can maybe start doing this. And so we did the networker. It was very, you know, very successful. It was a crash course in learning how to produce. Um, you can go to school and you can take all the classes you want, but I'm sure you know there is no experience like being out there and actually doing it because then like shit hits a fan and you're like, Stephen Baldwin's two hours late and you know, the camera is, uh, you know, who knows what floating in the river and like, oh my God, <laughs> what are we gonna do? And, and you just have to make it work. So we were on this high of like, yeah, let's do it. That all happened so quickly. You know, and that's, that's like, that's the number one trap. You're like, this is all going to happen so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Five years later, my dad is going to kill me when I tell the story. I told this once before and he's like, I didn't tell you that. And I'm like, dad, you totally told me this. But I remember hearing about a woman playing the NHL. And I, and this was, you know, back in the early nineties. And I asked him, he's like, yeah, they play in the NHL. They're usually goalies. So I went my entire adult life thinking women played in the NHL all the time. And so I was like, Mike, let's find that first woman that played in the NHL. And he's like, a woman played in the NHL? And I was like, yeah, man, they play in the NHL all the time. <laughs> and then I go and look, and I'm like, oh, okay. All right, so only one person did that. But her story was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we start digging, and Mike comes home, and he's like, you look just like her. And I'm like, no, I don't. And he's like, yeah, you look just like her. And then we met and we like totally look like each other. She lives in Michigan. She's 20 minutes from where I grew up. Her number's 33. My number playing in sports was 33. It was just like fate, right? So we started this journey, wrote the script. Five years later, you know, it's it's been a long, crazy haul. And I think when you're talking about like not giving up and just keep going, like we had started a small indie. Um, then Gary Marshall came on as an executive producer, which was like such a huge win. It was the validation that, you know, this this huge A-list uh, director, writer, actor believed in our story. And he's talking about all his people that he's going to call. And we were like, oh, my gosh, like we did it. We're going to make it. And then a few months later, he passed away. And that was just, you know, devastating on a lot of different levels. And, and so then the film kind of paused for a while. And then we got back into it. And then Penny Marshall came on board. And Penny Marshall directed A League of Their Own. And A League of Their Own has just always had a special place in my heart. Um, you know, I, I credit it as one of the movies that gave me the courage to, like, keep chasing my dreams. Mm -hmm. And so then they have Penny on board. I'm like, wow, this is full circle. This is going to happen. And then Penny passed away. And then it was just, I mean, we really got to this point where, like, Every time we get close, something happens and, it, and it, we take a step back. So we're taking like one step forward, two steps back. And I cannot tell you how many times we were just were like, we're just going to throw in the towel. But I kept thinking about that swimmer in California. And it, I, I don't remember when it was, but she was swimming this crazy route that nobody had swam before. And she was going to be the first person to do it. And the weather was really bad. And it got to the point where she couldn't see anymore. She didn't know what direction she was going. And she's like, I have to tap out. So she tapped the boat. They pulled her up. Turned out she was 100 yards from, from the finish line, from where she wanted to go. So she had just swam for like 12 hours and she was a hundred yards, which is nothing for a swimmer. If she had just kept going, she was right there. And that story has stuck with me because every time we want to just throw in the towel, I'm like, 
but what if we're just a hundred yards away? What if we give up right now? And then, you know, we were just right there. So it's kept me going. Um, over these five years of, of ups and downs and, and amazing people coming on board and, and people leaving and all this crazy stuff that happens with the film, um, just to keep going. Then the book came out. I'm not a nonfiction writer. It was really difficult for me to write the story. It was really difficult for me to write the script because you have to tell the real story, right? Mm -hmm. And even with the script, we wanted the story to be as close to what she was actually doing. Because I hate when you go and see a based on, you know, based on a true story, and then you go back and you Google it, and you're like, wait a minute, none of that was true. Like, there just was this person who did this, but everything else was fake. So we really wanted to keep everything um, as accurate as possible. And in the book, it's, it's all fact, right? Like, you can't have anything that's not, because the film's based upon a true story, but this is a biography. So both of them are really tricky in that sense of, like, how do you make this active, engaging story that people want to watch or read, but that's still telling, you know, the truth and the facts? And I really struggled with that with the book. Um, and that was another thing when I, I had some members of my critique group who said, you should write a book about it. And I was like, no, I'm not a nonfiction writer. And I almost didn't do it because I'm like, that's not in my wheelhouse. I don't do it. And I was also like, I have way too many other things I'm doing. And now it's crazy to think about, I could have. I could have been like, nah, it's not, it's not something I do. And this book wouldn't be here. Right. So I think that too is, is it's hard sometimes to have the courage to do something that's not in our, in our wheelhouse, not in our skill set. but sometimes you just got to take that leap of faith and it's going to work out or it's not going to work out, but at least you'll know. And I, I just feel in general, when you take leaps of faith, they have a tendency to work out one way or another. Um, I mean, the book coming out, being a number one new release in children's books on Amazon was like, oh my God, you know, just mind blowing. And I, I do think about, I'm like, Ange, like you almost didn't do this. So it just, it keeps, it keeps, um, it keeps me going. It keeps me going for this film, you know, like, all right, we're, we're, we're going to get there. We just, we just got to keep swimming. You know, the door, Dory keeps coming in my head. Just keep swimming. <laughs> well, I'm pretty confident that there's a lot of people out there listening to this interview who are saying to themselves, wait, hold on. Did she write a book or did she do the movie or like, which one did she? No, she did both. Oh my gosh. You know, like you are doing both again, like just the talents and everything that you know, and, and, and your consistency, like you said, there were multiple, well, more than multiple times, I'm sure. Cause I'm sure we didn't even touch on some of them, but that you easily could have just walked away or, or stepped away yeah. or whatever. Cause one thing led to another, but you have just continued to go and with success, it's not like a straight line. Like there are all those zigzags. So right now, like you may be in the zigzags, but yeah. you will get to that end point. You and might be zigging, but zagging could be coming soon, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. And, and in my opinion, when it does come to creating something or any sort of journey, I think that, the journey itself is the best part because yeah. that's when you have all the emotions, you get all those dopamine hits. Like, and then when the end product comes, then you're like, Oh man, it's over. Like, shoot. You know, like even though that moment's going to be so sweet for you when it does happen, but you've just handled it incredibly well. And I think that there's no better person to tell Manon Rayom's story oh. just from beginning to end, whether it is like the hard worker and you, you said you watched a league of, their own. And that was a, a huge movie that yeah. really stuck out with you as a kid to knowing about her as a kid to even looking like her. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this anywhere, I mean, we'll put up a side by side. I, I will later because I edit this. It's just amazing. And, and everything really does happen for a reason. I think that this is your reason. Oh, that's that's really sweet of you to say. I mean, it, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, I did when I when when Gary first came on board and we were talking about these big actors that were going to come and play, um, that he was going to reach out to, to play uh, my own mom and dad, I started to have all of this self doubt of like, Oh my gosh, I'm not a good enough actor to play this. And I didn't actually get this role. Like I wrote this role for me. I didn't audition. I didn't get this and, and went through this major self doubt of feeling like I didn't deserve it. And it took me a long time and it was a really good journey um, to go on. I think self-doubt is often a good journey. It sucks while you're going through it. But when you work your way through it, you figure out like, where is that self-doubt coming from? And then you're able to get through it and you're stronger on the other side. Everybody and has it. It's like that little, 
like fly on the shoulder yes. that you just want to swat away nonstop. And you just think people don't have it. <laughs> and um, actually, we were watching comedians in cars getting coffee, and we were watching one. I think it was I don't know. We were watching one of the big guys, and he was talking about how he doesn't think he's funny, and he doesn't think people like him. And I remember saying, I mean, like, are you kidding me? He like he's one of the biggest comedians out there, and he thinks that. And it actually. I think when you hear other people say that, it makes you feel a little better. You're like, well, that guy who's, you know, doing all this stuff, he has self-doubt. I guess I can be a little kinder to myself about having self-doubt. So I was going through this, this period of like, oh my gosh, how can I play across from these actors? I didn't, I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. And um, I had somebody tell me, they're like, Angie, you've been putting years and years of work into this. Nobody could play Manon better than you could. And like, you have to realize that. And it took me a while to realize, like, they're right. Like, I'm sure there are a lot of better actors out there. There always will be somebody who's better. There'll always be somebody who's worse. But as far as playing my no, I really do now. I'm like, who else could play her? I know her so well. Nobody else could play her. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but I got to stop you right there because for the listeners right now and the viewers, Angie, you lived with Manon's parents yeah. to, to really yeah. like get absorbed yeah. into the role yeah. of who you were playing. I mean, not many people do that. And you did like you dove into it. And that's one of the things that I really want to talk about with you today is, is the fact that when you have a project, when you have a goal that you set out to accomplish, you just have to like dive into it, swim in it, do just do anything and everything that you possibly could. And you pinpointed something that you could be better in. And you went ahead and try to find a way to get better in that. And that was one of those ways of like literally going to Manon's house <laughs> with her parents and staying with them. That's yeah. like, what, what, what was that like? And, and, and great idea too. I mean, like, shoot, if, if you're at home, listening, if you're trying to become an actor, an actress or anything that you're trying to do in life, like this is the type of stuff that you got to do in order to be great. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was scary. It was scary as all get out because <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm like, what do I do about dinner? Like I was weird, scared about like weird things. Like, do I eat with them? Like, what do I do? Right. I know. And her parents are the nicest people, but I was also going to play hockey and I was also going um, to take French lessons. And I, I took French in college, but my goodness, you don't speak a language. It's gone. And then to learn how to speak with an accent. So all these things that I, you know, French, uh, accent and hockey that I was not good at. I was flying there to just like immerse myself in, which is, you know, pretty scary, but also at the same time, really exciting. Like I live for that, right? Of, uh, oh my gosh, I'm scared shitless. This is awesome. <laughs> Let's do it. Cause you know, it's going to be an awesome time. And, um, it was, it was actually really crazy living with her parents because they just immediately were like, my, our second daughter, and just like took me right in. And I also looked like I could be their second daughter. I also, you know, look like my own sister. So I, all, downstairs, they have all this memorabilia of her. And it really was very insightful for me to be there and to see it and to see where she grew up and, and to, you know, take accent lessons and French lessons. And then I was playing hockey with, with like a, a little kid's tournament team. So it was all these like 11, 12 year olds and, and I show up and I'm like, oh my God, this is so awful. But I just went on like, I'm going to make a total ass of myself. I don't know how to play goalie, but I'm just going to do it because, you know, these 12 year olds are either going to laugh at me or going to be like super nice. And then, and they were all really nice. Like, oh, you're an actor learning to play goalie, which was really great because they let go like all the time. Things that I did trying to play, and then like they'd like come over and you know, oh, you should hold your stick like this, and you should do this, and you should do that, and you know, this is why I love kids because they're so accepting. You know, adults would be like, oh, you should just stick to playing, you know, an actor, don't whatever, and kids are like, oh, let me show you how to do this. Like, <laughs> do you want to come have a slumber party? You know, they're, they're like so awesome. Um, so the whole experience was just really cool. My own came up. We did a bunch of press. And this is like right in the time where I was like, oh my God, I, I shouldn't be doing this. And I think I needed that to, to just prove to myself of like, no, like you're on the right path. You are my own, like you're, you're playing her. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, and we joke all the time because there'll be times she'll be like, uh, this happened in this year. And I'm like, no, that didn't happen in that year. And she's like, oh, I was doing this. I was like, no, you weren't doing that. And she's like, you know my story better than I do. I'm like, no, I know your story better than you. 
Like, I literally know your story inside and out. It's a little crazy. That's a reflection of your hard work right there. (laughs) I mean, what better compliment than that? I know. I know. We spent a lot of time together. Um, We did. The summer, just to like you know, film something and, and, and be creative. Uh, during the pandemic, we did these videos of since we can't play hockey. And we just were like, what if we did a cooking show? Cause both of us love to cook. I've always wanted a cooking show. She would love to be on a cooking show. I'm like, let's just do our own cooking show. Well, then it expanded and, and we have one coming out next week with goats and like golfing and all this fun stuff. But the whole time we're together, my husband was, you know, cause it's, COVID. So it was just the three of us. We had no crew. So Mike was cameraman, producer, craft services, lighting, sound, like all of this. Right. And, and the two of us, and he would just be like, I can't even handle you two. You are the same person. And I, I mean, really, it's really crazy when you see us together because it's not just looks like just even personality wise. We, the only thing we laugh about that is different between us is she loves the shop. I hate the shop and I love to eat. And she's like, could take or leave it as far as eating. And I'm like, no, man, give me all the good food. And those episodes were a lot of fun. That was something new. We had never done that before. We'd never shot a web series. We just took our phones and went. Like we didn't have any great equipment. We couldn't rent anything. And we're like, well, let's not let that stop us. And because it almost did. Because I'm like, no, we're like, we're more professional than that. Like we need all this stuff. And then I had to step back and be like, it's a pandemic. Just make something. And that too, I think it's something is we often stop ourselves. Like if it's not going to be the quality we think it's going to be, or we don't think we have the experience we think we should, we don't do something. And man, I just urge people to like, just do it. Just throw caution to the wind. Just do it. See what happens. And you know, the first one was like, okay, the sound wasn't great. The video wasn't great. And then they got better every time. And you know, we just had so much fun doing it and we learned a lot. So even just the process of learning is worth taking a chance and doing something. And who knows, maybe one of those videos likes the one that you did where it's showing how you cook baked oatmeal to being on the golf course, showing off your guys' swings. Like maybe one of those will stick. Next thing you know, you have a million views and you're creating even more content. Yeah. I mean, Food Network, if you're listening, I want a cooking show. (laughs) That's one thing we don't have here of all the things you've said. Cooking shows should be on there. (laughs) You could possibly be on Food Network. Who knows? (laughs) If I do, I'm giving all the credit to you, man. Yeah. (laughs) So when it does come to creating, because like you said, when you just like get out there and create, it doesn't matter what you have, what you're doing, whatever the heck it is. For you with this children's book, you have to keep it to what, 40 pages? And and for a movie, you have to keep it to a certain length. I mean, you could go as long as three hours if you want, but like technically it's what, like an hour, hour and a half. So for you, when you're trying to tell the story of the first woman athlete to play in a major pro sport, for the first time ever, how do you fit Menon Rayom's story into those 40 pages and into that time frame of that hour to two hours? I mean, you don't. You you don't. It's really, there are so many things that we did not get to talk about in her story because, I mean, especially with children's book. Like you said, 40 pages, we're talking under 1,500 words. So every word you're picking has to be the exact word that you want. You can't just go on and on about it, right? And then you're limited to this small number of pages. So for both the film and the book, well, all the way around, film and book, um, we had to figure out what did we want to focus on? Because yes, Manon did this amazing, incredible thing, playing in the NHL, keeping up at the top level. I mean, it's out of this world. But Manon was also on the first team that went to the Olympics in 1998, the first time women hockey was in the Olympics. And then she also had an incredible minor league career. And she had all these other firsts. And you're like, how do you tell all of this? And so that was really hard for us to narrow it down. And so both of them, we just focused on um, the NHL as the pinnacle, you know, kind of maybe with the thought of maybe we can expand off of that afterwards, because, you know, after that happened, then all of, you know, she just kept going. You know, who who goes to the NHL is the first person, you know, the first woman to ever do that. And that's just like the stepping stone of all the other amazing things she did, right? Like, that's that's incredible. She's got a statue. I mean, how many living humans have a statue? 
<laughs> it's so crazy. Which, by the way, I'm totally gonna be like, that's my statue. Look, she's like me. <laughs> so you know, just so you know. But yeah, um, so we did. We we focused on NHL. To be completely honest, uh, a lot of that is because, I mean, outside of the obvious reasons, but it's still a very sexist industry, and men's stories are getting told at an incredibly higher rate than women's stories, especially sports stories. And we've had, I mean, I cannot tell you the number of times we've had people be like, meh, you know, and then some other like weird sports movie with a guy comes out and we're like, this story is so much better. And they're like, Oh, well, do people really want to hear a woman's sports story? And we're like, yes. Like, yes. Do you know, majority of people go to the movies are women and they want to hear women's sports stories and like, yeah, but do they really want a story written by a woman? And like, it's, it was too much woman, right? Written by a woman, produced by women, about a woman, about a woman in hockey. And it, it closed a lot of doors because Hollywood still old white men. Right. Yep. And like, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And that's, that has been probably our biggest um, roadblock is people thinking that other people don't want to hear her story, which by the way, the NHL for the first time ever put out a tweet and an Instagram post for my own anniversary on the 23rd within the night, it had 250,000 likes on Instagram, which was, I went and looked, more than any other post that the NHL has put out. So if you're telling me people don't want to see a story about a woman playing hockey, you're nuts. We just keep seeing this like, People want these stories. They want to see, one, they want to see positive stories and family-friendly stories and underdogs. Everybody loves an underdog. And the big thing we talk about this is that it's not a hockey story. She just happens to be playing hockey, but it's not about hockey. It's about her having this crazy dream and not giving up. And that's something a lot of people can really relate to, especially because the reason people didn't want her to succeed was because of her gender. I mean, that's look at so many things that are happening today. You can't do things because of your gender or your sexual orientation or your ethnicity or your background or your education. So many people are being prejudiced in that way and, and having these biases against them. And so to see somebody who just kept going and rose above it and didn't let society pressure it into like, this is not a woman's thing. And she did it anyway. Like, we need those stories. People need those stories. It gives them courage to chase their crazy dreams. As a viewer, I'm excited to to get my hands on the children's book. I'm extremely excited to see the movie when it's finished. But more importantly, as a as a person just trying to make the world better, I just want to say thank you oh. for sharing this story, taking the bull by the horns, and and really telling it the best way that you possibly could. Again, I said before, everything happens for a reason. I think you're the reason with this story. Uh, Manel Rayom, great, great, great role model. Um, yeah. Can't stress that enough. Oh, my God. And you guys are on to, or you girls <laughs> are on to some really big things. So Thank you. Thank you. Man, I'm just so excited. And everybody, again, if you have a young child, doesn't matter, boy or girl, if you're doesn't older, matter. go check out the book, Breaking the Ice on Amazon. You can get it right there. Again, awesome. top selling new release on Amazon. The movie Between the Pipes, that's going to be coming out in due time. But in the meantime, yeah. I want everybody to keep in touch with you. Where could they find you? Yeah, me too. Um, I'm all over social media. So you can follow me. Um, Angie Blero is my handle for everything and AngieBlero.com. Um, just to keep track of what's going on with projects I'm in and, and the book. Um between the pipes movie.com between the pipes also is all over social media. So you can follow that for all the fun stuff we're doing with the film and all the announcements that come out. Um, lots of great stuff, book launches and all that fun stuff is all um, online on social media. So definitely, definitely follow, um, keep in touch. I love getting, I love getting people's stories of how her story has um, influence and impacted them and inspired them. I love them. So definitely share your stories with that. It, it, I think that's also a big fuel of what's kept us going. Um, every time I see a dad put a, a story out of his daughter in goalie gear and say, thank you, Manon Rion, you know, my daughter plays goalie because of you. I'm like, dang it. This is why we're doing it. I can't give up. That dad just put his girl in a, in goalie gear. Like I got to keep going for all the little kids.
kids out there that want to do this crazy thing, we got to keep going. So yeah, share your stories. I love them. They, they keep us going when things get crazy. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, sharing some inspiration story behind you and, and, and how you can be so effective and impactful with thank just, uh, just, me. just some hard work. So thank you so much, Angie. We really do appreciate your time yeah. here on Keep Swing. Oh my gosh. It's been so much fun. Thanks for having me on. Hey everybody. Thank you so much for watching that episode of Keep Swing. Man, we have so many more awesome guests on the way and I don't want you to miss any of it. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, feel free to go back and watch past episodes. And again, if you subscribe to the channel, that is the best way to find out who we are going to have on the show next. And if there's a guest that you want on the show, I will do all that I can to have him or her come on. So please leave a comment. Let me know who you want to see on Keep Swing coming up. And also, too, feel free to leave a comment what you thought about the episode in the comment section below. Give it a like. And if you head over to Instagram, I'll be posting clips from all these interviews. Just a little daily inspiration. And there you can interact with me as well. Until then, have an awesome day and keep swinging.